Hey there, this is Mike, and we are doing a playthrough of Dark Souls the card game today. No disclaimer needed for this one, it was recommended strongly by Dave on our Slack, so I picked up a copy myself. And I'm really happy to be covering this one because I am a big Souls video game fan, and I own Dark Souls the board game, but I've always heard such mixed things about it and the need for house ruling that I've never actually gotten it out for a play. But Dark Souls the card game tends to have a more positive image overall, and let's see if that's earned as we get into a playthrough. Like with all my play videos, I'm going to go through the basics of setup and how to play the game. If you want to skip past that, just use the timestamps. And if you like what you see here at the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider joining the conversation on our Slack or Discord channel, listen to our podcast on Sundays, and support us on Patreon for some nice perks. So to get into the basics of setup, first you're going to want to choose the characters you'll be controlling. There are four in the core game and two in each of the two expansions, but I'm just going to use core game content here, I've chosen the Herald, sort of the Cleric of the group, and the Assassin. And here I've got the main boards for the game, the Battle Board, both the Hero and the Enemy side, and the Encounter Board. I'm going to take my two characters and put them in initial positions on the Player Battle Board. And for now, with not much information either way, I'm going to have the Herald in the front, the Assassin in the back. Next, I'm going to fill out our encounter board. In the core game, you've got two sides to this, each one with a pair of bosses you'll have to defeat. I'm going with the side I consider slightly more difficult. And you'll see there are five spaces for encounter cards from one to two to three difficulty in rating. I'm going to shuffle the three decks of those encounter cards separately, and I'm going to fill each of the five spaces on the encounter board with the appropriate cards. All the rest of these cards will not be used for the rest of the game, so you can put them back in the box. I'm also going to take the five bonfire cards and order them from one on top to number five on bottom, near the encounter board. Next I'm going to organize all my decks of cards nearby. And the face down ones I'm going to shuffle. So these are basic treasures, transposed treasures, and enemies from level one to three. But the rest of this stuff you don't have to shuffle. I've got all our two soul stamina cards in the top row, all our five soul stamina cards in the bottom row. We'll get to what all that means. And I have all the cards associated with the two bosses that appear on our chosen side of the encounter board at the ready. Finally, perhaps most important, because this game is partially a deck builder, I'm going to shuffle each of my character's decks separately. And I will note you can play this true solo, and it works fine, but I think the game is best with two to four players, or two to four characters if you're soloing, because the tactical combat works in a lot more of an interesting way. Once you've got your decks shuffled, I'm going to keep my Herald on the left side and my Assassin on the right to hopefully keep me organized. You're ready to play the game. So to first give a broad overview of the game, you are a party of adventurers in this fallen world. If you haven't played any Dark Souls, that's kind of the general gist of these things. And in this game, you have two bosses you have to defeat. And you're going to have basically five rounds because of the five bonfire cards in which to defeat both of those bosses. In each of those rounds, you'll face a series of encounters following these little yellow lines, choosing how difficult you want them to be. In those encounters, you'll face a bevy of enemies, and you'll fight them on the combat boards using your character's unique deck. As you use cards from your deck and take damage, you'll discard them, so eventually your deck will run low. And you'll have to stop your current foray into the darkness either when one of the characters runs out of cards completely and is defeated, or you choose to go back to the bonfire and rest. When you do that, you'll get to use the souls you've earned from defeating enemies to buy these stamina cards to upgrade your deck. And additionally, you'll gain treasure cards from fighting encounters that can also go in your deck. You'll advance the bonfire level 1, gaining a bonus, and you'll rinse and repeat until you either defeat both the bosses in your journeys or you run out of fire time. Now let's get into more specifics, but I want to do that as I play through my first round. I think things will make a lot more sense that way. So let's jump right in and see how the game plays. So my characters actually don't draw their starting hands until we get into an encounter, so let's pick. You have to pick an encounter that comes right from the bonfire space here. So I could face a level 1 encounter here, a level 2 here or here, or a level 3 here. Just for the purposes of teaching the game, let's start with the level 1. So I flip it over and I am in Dark Hollow. I'm going to cross index the number of characters in the game, in this case 2. And you'll see first what my reward will be if I defeat this encounter. One basic treasure card. Then you'll see how many enemies I will be fighting. In this case, two enemies from the weakest deck with the skull icon. 
I have to choose where each of my characters will be on the board, so yes, I could move them. But I don't have any information yet, so this is fine. In very basic terms, the Herald will tend to be tanking more damage, and both them being in the center will give them the most flexibility for hitting the enemies who come out. Next, if my characters don't already have six cards in their hand, they will draw up to the six card maximum. Here my Herald has drawn three stamina cards, a kite shield, Herald armor, and a spear. If I had no weapons in my six card hand going into the encounter, I could mulligan once, shuffling all these into my deck and drawing a new six card hand, but you can only do that at the beginning of the encounter and only once. In this case, I do have a spear and I can also attack with a kite shield, so I'm fine. The assassin is also fine, no defense for them, but they do have two Kukri knives and four stamina cards. With our heroes set up and raring to go, let's get to our enemies. And again, remember, with two heroes, we're drawing two Skull enemies. And we'll reveal them one at a time. Here I've got an Erythilian Slave Assassin. The key thing I have to worry about right now is where he goes. You'll see he goes to the bottom right space, which is why I have the enemy board in this configuration. That's just how their cards are set up. And I've got a Crossbow Hollow. He's in the bottom left space. And our first encounter is now set up. And in very basic terms, we're going to activate all the enemies. Then we're going to take a hero turn where we can play cards and attack and stuff. Then the enemies go. Then we go back and forth until one of us is defeated where we cannot draw enough cards to fill out our six card hand or until all the enemies are defeated. Now let's look at the basic anatomy of an enemy card real quick. This is how many souls they're worth, which is what you use to level up. Their armor value that's subtracted from each attack against them. How much damage you have to do to defeat them how much damage they do to you when they attack, and their vulnerability. If you do an attack of this type, you ignore the armor value. Most enemies will have a single hero spot they are targeting, and some will have little symbols in here to show poison and those kind of things, but we've got some basic enemies here. Some will have special powers, though, like the Slave Assassin says this card cannot be attacked while there are non-invisible enemies in play. So we're going to activate enemies from left to right, top to bottom. So we'll have the Crossbow Hollow go first, and then the Slave Assassin. The Crossbow Hollow is attacking for three damage, no special effects. You first check if anyone's in his preferred targeting space, and no one is. Then if that didn't work out for him, he now checks the entire row. So he'll hit the Herald. But if there were two options, like here, he would attack the character with the higher taunt value. So he'd go for the Assassin over the Herald if they were both in that front row. So the Herald is getting three damage incoming. So when a hero is attacked for damage, they can play one card in reaction. And that'll be generally an armor or a shield card. And this kind of gets into the basics of hero cards. But to play a card, you must play accompanying it the indicated colors of stamina cards. So the Herald Armor can either be used to block 3 damage or 2, but to block 3 damage I need to discard a red stamina card from my hand. Now there's also two other important symbols here, a little rotating circle and a down arrow. The rotating circle means this is a quick action. After I play this card, it goes back to my hand. The stamina I use in this case still gets discarded, but the armor is ready to block another attack. If it instead has a down arrow, it is a standard action and this card will get discarded, although note in this case that I would not have to spend any stamina to use it. My other option to block this incoming damage is the kite shield. Now this, the little cross sword symbol, is damage, so I can bash somebody with the shield, but I'm not looking at that right now. I'm trying to block an attack, so I could discard a yellow and a red stamina to block three damage and keep this card in my hand. Now if any damage remains, I have to discard that many cards, the remaining damage, and those cards discarded can come from my hand and or from the top of my deck in whatever mix I want. But in this case, I've got a great defensive option. I'm going to block all of it with one red stamina discarded with my hide armor, and it's a quick action, so that stays in my hand. And then our Slave Assassin also wants to attack a space no one occupies, so she'll also attack the front row, which means the Herald. And I didn't say if nobody was in the front row, they would just attack someone in the back row with the highest taunt. These basic attacks you can never get away from. So the Herald could use another red to keep his Herald armor in his hand. That would block all the damage. But that is a little iffy because I'm going to redraw to six, but I need red to use my spear to attack. So I think I'm instead going to discard my armor to block two damage. And I'll discard one card from the top of my hand because it was three damage. I prevented two. In this case, a red stamina. 
Now all of our enemies have finished activating, and at this point anyone who has fewer than six cards in their hand from defending and such gets to redraw them. So I've got another spear and another yellow stamina. Now we get to our hero activation, and we've got a lot of fun options to play with. But first, a key concept. Turns here are fluid. So the Herald could do one action, then the Assassin could do one, then the Herald could do something else, then the Assassin could do all their stuff, and the Herald could finish up their stuff. So it's basically like simultaneous act as you like. Well, what can you do on your turn? First of all, you can move a single space. And why does that matter? We already saw it matters for who the enemies attack, but it also matters for who you can attack. You can only attack someone in the same column as you, and unless it's a ranged attack with a bow icon, you can't have any cards in your way. So the Assassin, even though they're super far away, if they moved over here, they could still attack the Crossbow Hollow with a melee attack. But uh-oh, if the Herald was in their way, they would have to have a ranged attack to attack. So you can move once per turn, you can go left, right, up, or down, but you can never go to the enemy side of things. And if two characters would like to switch positions, they can, but it uses up both of their movement for the turn. You can also use your character's unique ability. The Herald can heal themselves or someone else for three. Healing means you take the bottom three cards of your discard pile and put them on the bottom of your deck. And the Assassin can backstab someone, flip himself over to deal one damage to someone in his column, ignoring armor. And for both of them, they can't use their abilities again until they finish having encounters and go back to the bonfire. You can also play an attack action once per turn. Again, that's one of the ones that has a cross sword icon. You can use a non-attack action once per turn. We're not going to have any of those for a while. And finally, if your hand just isn't working for you, you can discard as many cards from your hand once per turn and redraw. But don't forget, your deck is your life, so if you do that too often, you're going to run out too quickly. So strategizing a bit, we need to do two damage to kill the Crossbow Hollow, since he has one armor and one life. Although if any of us had a magic-type attack, which we don't in our hand right now, we could ignore that one armor. Once he's gone, the invisibility won't protect the Slave Assassin anymore. She also needs two damage, or one if you attack with a precise weapon and ignore her armor. Here's the type of the weapon for that weakness armor ignoring, but you'll see that we have a total mismatch here, so that won't help us. Well, let's get the Herald to come kill this crossbow hollow. He'll move one over to be in the correct column, and he'll play one of his two spears. Often I would want to keep it in my hand with a circular quick action, but because I have two of them and a shield I can attack with, it's fine to just get rid of it. So for one red stamina, I can do two damage. Both cards are discarded. And that is enough to overcome the Crossbow Hollow's one armor and one life. So you can just put him beside the board. You'll need to know what his soul value is in a moment. And that's about it for the Herald. Remember, they can't move again this turn and can't attack, so they certainly can't affect that Slave Assassin. But the Assassin certainly can. Let's have them move over. And they've got two options here for finishing her off. First, the only attack card in the Assassin's hand, the Kukris. They can do one damage and keep it in their hand. That's not going to get through the armor since it's not the right type. But look here, if they discard it as a range attack for no stamina, they can inflict bleeding on the Slave Assassin. And there's four of these little status effects in the game. Bleeding means the next time that target gets attacked, they take one extra damage. But that's hardly ideal. That means we'll have to let the Slave Assassin hit us for three more. So our other option, why not use it? Let's backstab her. She's not invisible anymore. That's one damage, ignoring armor, which in her case is all we needed. So we have defeated the encounter. Now normally at the end of player activation, you refill your hand for each character, up to six cards. But when an encounter is fully finished, you don't get to do that yet until you make the decision to carry on or go back to the bonfire. But before we do that, we're going to look at our rewards. We got three souls and one basic treasure. We don't flip that treasure over yet, but we do get our soul tokens. But here's a key concept that'll make a lot of sense to soul video game veterans. You don't have this stuff yet. It's in your loot pile. If you now decide that that's it, you're done, you want to go back to the bonfire, you get the stuff right away. But otherwise, it is in jeopardy for your next encounter. So if I go on to fight like this guy or this guy, if I lose, if one of us is defeated, we lose this stuff. We don't get it at all. But once you survive another encounter, all the stuff in your loot goes to your inventory, and then you get your new set of loot. So basically, you have to win one more encounter to protect the stuff you won from the last one, unless you go back to the bonfire. The Herald has five cards in his discard pile, but he has the ability to heal three of them. The Assassin has no cards in his discard pile. So we're going on. 
So we're gonna mark this card with an encounter cleared token. That's because this will always be the encounter card on this spot for the rest of the game. When we rested a bonfire, we'll take this token away, which means we'd still have to fight through this one to get to the next encounter past it. But in typical Dark Souls fashion, you can fight something again and again, keep on getting bonuses from the creatures and having fun that way. One more quick note on encounters before we go to our next one. After every encounter, you shuffle all the enemies you fought back into the deck. So you can see the same people again and again, potentially. So we are not quitting. I could fight a level three, which would be foolish. One of the two level twos or another level one. Again, I think we're looking pretty nice. So let's go for this level two. And this is a weathered peak. We can get two treasures this time. Ooh, we're fighting two level two enemies instead of level one. Once again, we can change our configuration. I'm gonna put us back to where we are. Yes, the Herald has used more cards and maybe I should move the Assassin up, but the Herald actually has something he can block with, whereas the Assassin doesn't. Now that we've picked our positions, we can redraw our hands. A good red is just what I needed. The Herald has a weapon, so cannot mulligan. The Assassin's hand doesn't change at all, so same thing. Now we get our two level two enemies, much tougher than what we just saw. First, we've got a Gru Spearman, five attack and poisons whoever they're attacking. They're gonna be back here and attacking the Herald in the front row. And then a Lothric Knight, much more minor attack, but tons of armor and health. And he's going right in the front. They're both gonna be hitting the Herald this turn. And we go right into resolution. First, the Lothric Knight attacks for two. The Herald could block with a yellow and red stamina up to three damage. That would cancel all of the two. But that would be discarding two stamina cards from our hand, which you might note is identical to taking two damage. So I think the Herald can just take their chances with two cards off the top. A red stamina and a spear. Okay, so we'll probably want to keep our spear around for at least a turn. All right, now the Gru Spearman attacks for five and a poison. So for this one, yes, I do think I'll use my kite shield. So a red and a yellow get discarded. I cancel three of the five, two still incoming. I'll discard two cards from the top of my deck again. Ah, my Herald Armor and a Talisman. Ooh, that's a rough one to lose. That is a five healing item we just had to discard. And the Herald is also Poison, which is probably one of the roughest effects. They're gonna have to take one damage at the end of their activation. But don't forget the Herald gets to redraw. We got another yellow stamina and a purple stamina, interesting. All right, strategy is probably pretty obvious to you here. The Crew Spearman is definitely the major threat. Has two armor and one life, so we gotta either do three damage or just one damage if we can do a weapon that is green. And the Assassin just happens to have one of those skilled green weapons, but oh, they do not have the purple stamina to use it. So here we'll go ahead and discard two cards from our deck. Remember, you can do this once per turn, see if we get lucky. Get a shield and another blue, no luck. But fear not, we're not done, because don't forget the bleeding effect. So the Assassin's gonna use their one move to get in the right column, and they're just gonna straight up discard this to apply bleed to the Spearman. Remember the next attack on them will deal plus one damage now. And our spear seems perfect for this. Now I didn't mention this yet, but a white symbol is any color stamina. So to do two damage and keep this in my hand, I need red, yellow, and white. I've got the red, I've got the yellow, let's ditch this purple one. But the spear stays around. Oh, I'm sorry, I should say the Herald has to move over one. So that's two damage plus one from the bleeding, which gets through the two and does the one. The Spearman is defeated. And that's it for both of us. The Herald has to take one damage and then the poison is discarded. He'll throw away his one stamina left and just draw fresh. Speaking of drawing, the Assassin gets a sword, and the Herald gets a ton of red and a little bit of yellow stamina. Okay, back to the enemies. We only have one left. He's hitting the Herald for two. And once again, I could use two stamina to use my kite shield or just discard two cards. It's kind of all the same. Let's see one of these reds in the top card of my deck, which is a purple. And I will note the Herald is definitely getting a little bit low, but they do get to redraw another kite shield. Right, the tough thing now is going to be to defeat this guy. He's got four life and two armor, but if we have a precise purple weapon, we can get through that, which the assassin does. Nice. So let's have the assassin move over. And I actually don't need the herald to attack right now. Let's have him run to the back, which means now the assassin will get hit, which is what we want with how the things have kind of been divvied up. And the herald will flip to use perseverance, healing three. So I take the bottom three cards of my discard and I just put them in the same order right on the bottom of my draw deck. I could have healed the assassin, but they don't need it. An easiest thing I can think of for this turn, I can use the S stock to do two damage. Remember its type is correct, so it'll cut right through the armor. Use all three of my stamina, keep it around for next turn. If I can do it again, that knight is no more. 
So I need a blue and a yellow and anything. Does two damage. And hey, look at that. We got these little skull damage tokens. We've been killing things so well, we didn't need to use them until now. The assassin gets to redraw some armor, a yellow, and a blue. Nice, we need one more stamina to be able to finish off this guy with the S-Dock. But first, the Lothric Knight is attacking. Remember, first he tries to attack the person here, nobody. Then, highest taunt in this row, nobody. Highest taunt here, the assassin. Now, the assassin has a lot of armor with this dodge symbol. What that means is you cancel the entire attack, all the damage and all special effects like bleeding and poison associated with it. But in this case, what I really care about is drawing more stamina, so I don't mind just taking the two damage. And I'll discard my target shield and my kukris to make sure I... Come on, come on. Oh, maybe not make sure. Oh, you know what? Silly me. I can discard the S-Dock with a single blue to do two damage, also cutting through his armor, because again, the type is right. So let's do that. The Herald can just rest. Uh, two armor is ignored. Two more damage. The Lothric Knight is defeated. So we've won another encounter. First things first, our loot and three souls are now banked in our inventory. They aren't going anywhere. But we have some new fun things to risk. Twelve souls, yikes. And two more basic treasures. I'm gonna take these big markers for five souls each, plus these two little ones, plus our two treasures. These are all in our loot in jeopardy if we go on to fight again. And our two guys get shuffled back in, and we get to mark that this encounter has been cleared. So we have a bit of a tough choice here. We could go fight the level one. The assassin can go in the front to try to tank the damage, has a nice set of cards and a bunch of their deck left. But don't forget, if the Herald has to draw up to six cards and cannot, and man, their deck is low even with the healing, we both lose immediately and we would lose all of those souls and items. But hey, what fun is that? Let's go for it. All right, so we are in the Ash Gardens. Oh, yikes. A level two and a level one, that is worse than I wanted. All right, we're gonna switch our normal placement. There are people who will target the back row, but they tend to be a little bit more rare. The Assassin gets to draw two more cards. Let's hope for some stamina, yes. Although no purple to use my shield yet. All right, and our level one. Ah, here we go, a crossbow Grave Warden hitting for three in the back row. One armor, one life. And our big in Silver Knight Swordsman. So this is interesting. I'm glad we see this right before the end of our first full round. This is an area effect attack, and this will hit everyone in the indicated spaces, but it will only hit them. So if both my guys get to the back row, this person will be unable to attack them entirely. He additionally has the push effect, which is going to push back my units when they get hit by this attack. Or in the case of our Herald and Assassin, if the Assassin would get pushed back, they instead switch places when somebody's in the space. If you would get pushed when you're already as far back or as far to the side as you can go, you just ignore the push. So this guy's going to hit the Assassin, switching him with the Herald. Then the Crossbow Grave Warden is also going to hit the Assassin, so I guess that kind of worked out. And of course, such a lovely thing, both of them are weak to magical attacks, and so far we have none of those. Although I think the Herald has some in waiting. All right, so three damage on the Assassin. Their Assassin armor is pretty nice. Any stamina to prevent two and keep this in my hand. So I'll use a yellow to keep my options open. I need to discard one more. Let's get rid of the shield I can't use. And we get switched by the push. Then the Grave Warden's attack in the back row hits the Assassin as well. I'm gonna use my blue stamina because that is the Assassin's bread and butter. They tend to have a ton of them in the deck. That'll power the Assassin's armor to cancel I guess I could discard it and evade and cancel all of it. Let's do that, because I want to draw more cards to attack with. The Assassin does draw now a purple, yellow, blue, and more armor. That worked out great. All right, so what I'm thinking is let's move the Assassin over, kill this guy, move the Herald back, and then the Silver Knight Swordsman will just cry because he will never hit us again. So the Herald won't be able to attack this turn, but the Assassin just needs to do two damage to finish the Crossbow Grave Warden off. So lots of options for that, but I'd like to keep this card in my hand since I have no other attacking options. So that'll be a blue, a yellow, and a white. Let's do my only purple. And this guy is defeated. So now we basically have infinite number of turns to jockey for position and use our cards to kill this guy, although we can still be defeated by running out of cards. Let's see what the assassin has. Uh, their deck is getting very thin as well. Hmm. Let's move the Herald over first, then the Assassin. The Herald can attack this turn, and then the Herald can attack, and they can switch, and the Assassin can attack next turn. The guy's only got three life and one armor, so it won't be too hard to finish him off. The Herald's got enough cards that he should be fine, so let's uh, discard both of these useless kite shields to redraw. More red, more red, wow. Now let's see, we can discard four stamina and the spear to do three damage. But that means we're redrawing five cards. We do have that many, so we can do it. 
That's two damage getting by his shields. And we refill. Ooh, another talisman to heal five. I guess the uh, Herald doesn't have to be out of it. But I was also wrong. Apparently they don't have any magical attacks. All right, we can skip the enemy activation. Doesn't much matter. We'll just have the Assassin and Herald switch. And the Assassin can easily do the two damage left. And even if we went down to where we wouldn't be able to refill our hand after the end of the round, the second all the enemies are defeated, you don't have to check that. You can just go straight back to the bonfire. But hey, let's not forget our rewards. Seven souls and another basic treasure. And we are going to go back to the bonfire, so we can just bank everything. We've got, oh my gosh, a lot of these. That was an amazing first round. So when you go back to the bonfire, you take away all the completed encounters. You'll have to go back through those again if you want to uh, get past them. You ditch the topmost bonfire cards. We're down to level two now. And a few important things come out here. First of all, we gain one common treasure from the deck. That goes right to our inventory. And also our decks now have a 31 max size. They started out as 28 card decks. And you'll see in a second we can buy stamina cards with our souls and get the treasures we had and build out our decks, but we have to get them down to 31 cards after we do so. so here's our bonus treasure that brings us to five overall, wow. So let's look at how leveling up at the end of one of these sets of encounters works. So first you can put your whole deck back together. And next let's look at our treasures. They'll pretty much always be stronger than your starting cards. But the big thing to look at is who you want to give them to. So this scimitar, for example, has yellow and blue stamina. The assassin's most common color is blue, and second most common color is yellow. So the scimitar makes a pretty obvious choice for them. Meanwhile, great soul arrow, we finally got a magic attack. That's purple and red. The herald has mostly red, and then purple is a third most common stamina, but still it makes way more sense for them than the assassin. Although we could just leave it out entirely and keep it in our inventory to maybe add to our decks later. Sunlight Straight Sword also makes perfect sense for the Herald. Red and yellow are their most common colors. Sunlight Talisman, more healing, but again, red, which uh, the Assassin doesn't even have any of. And then the Sorcerer's Staff can kind of go to anybody. But I think since the Herald is already kind of doing the magic thing, uh, giving it to them with some more purple makes the most sense. So in this case, we don't have much balance at all. We have four for the Herald and only one for the Assassin, where we can each add three cards. So we'll have to take out some of our starting cards to make it work. But let's not forget, we have 22 souls, a huge haul. And you use these to buy these upgraded stamina cards. And just like with the treasures, they have to each go to a certain character's deck, although technically they're in your inventory and you could trade them around later. So for the two cost stamina cards, they can be one or another color type. So it just gives you flexibility when you draw them. The five cost ones though are amazing. They count as both stamina types. So they will pay two points worth of the cost of an effect you want to play. So we have 22 and I like to go to the big ones as quickly as I can. So I might get four of those and just one of the uh, two stamina ones. First, let's get some for the Assassin. I think they're gonna be pretty much ignoring purple. So let's go nice and simple and match the new weapon they got and just get them two of these double ones for 10 of our souls. And that's three cards added to their deck overall, so we don't have to do anything else, they're done. So we've got 12 more to play with with the Herald. Remember, they wanna keep on bumping up red and yellow their best, but they've got these purple heavy cards now, so we really wanna get some more purple to kind of balance their deck a bit. So actually, even though I just talked about how much I love the five cost ones, Let's instead get six two-cost ones and really change up the composition of our deck. So do note that there is no combination of yellow and purple. They're kind of opposites. And there's also no combination of blue and red. So I think I'm going to get four purple reds and two yellow reds. So we'll just keep the red consistent since that's on basically everything I have. So I have ten new cards to add and my deck size only went up by three. So I have to call seven cards. Although they technically go to our inventory. So like the assassin could take them later if he wanted to. Now I like to keep my decks kind of balanced, so I got three new weapons, which probably means I want to get rid of one of my old ones. So let's ditch one of these spears, now we need to get rid of six more. And for the other six, I'm going to try getting rid of stamina. Remember, every single one of the cards that is added has red on it, so I think I'm comfortable getting rid of four red and one of each of my other colors. So there you go, that's one entire round of the game. I just shuffle my decks up, I would pick where I'm going to start on the board, and I'm ready to go. But since I want to keep this video pretty snappy, I'm going to jump right to a boss battle. So I'm going to pause the video, play through a bit, level up, wait until I'm at uh, bonfire level 3 or 4, and then we'll show you how one of these boss fights goes. And yes, indeed, it is time to face High Lord Volnir. I'm going to go with a German W there. So each of the bosses has their own shtick and their own unique activation deck. For Volnir, he starts in the middle, but he himself can never be attacked. But then he puts his left and right hand out. 
And you have to defeat both of them, but they both have an ability that if they're not in the front row, they can't be attacked unless it's a ranged attack. Then you just shuffle his activation deck, and we're good to go. Although, oh, we should uh, check where we're going to be. I think we'll still go like this. The Herald's got two different defensive cards ready to use. So bosses are mostly like regular enemies, except you flip the top card of their deck to activate them. And it'll often make them move. In this case, the left hand is creeping forward, but the rest of them stay where they are. And you just put them straight in those spots. You don't have to, like, worry about moving them a certain number of spaces. Okay, this is going to hit the assassin in the back and move him forward. That's not what I wanted. And uh, for four damage. And also know that for this round, the boss is weak to this type of attack. So their weakness changes from round to round. So I've got a four attack coming in. I think I want to attack with the Flam Burge this turn. So let's do one plus the top of my deck, deck, deck. Okay, a lot of stamina, and there's my armor, of course. And I redraw. Got my dumb knives. And even though you got the boss and the two hands, you only resolve the one attack for them. So each of the hands has one armor. The right hand only has four life with two characters. The left hand has eight. But remember, we can only attack the left hand unless we have a ranged attack right now. So with that in mind, Assassin, come on over. Let's do your most powerful Flamberge attack. Three damage, then bleeding. I need both my stamina to make it happen. But let's also use my Sharp Gem, plus one damage, and changes it to the weapon type the boss is vulnerable to. So that'll be now four damage, ignoring armor, and a bleed. So, yuck, maybe I should have fought the tougher boss, because... Ouch. Could backstab him for one more damage if necessary. Let's see if the Herald can get in, though. So I don't know if the Herald has any of those types of attacks. So with the armor intact, they would need to do uh, four damage plus the bleed. And the only weapon they have at the moment is a kite shield. Hooray. All right, so let's uh, discard, I think, and redraw. Uh, let's get rid of the shield. The Herald armor to keep our best armor. And I guess one of these. More stamina, more stamina. Oh my gosh, no attack at all. All right, well then, the Assassin's not going to use their ability yet, and the Herald will just stay put. Assassin does get to redraw. Stamina, stamina, sword, and stamina. I can work with that. Hopefully, though, the Herald's the one who gets attacked this round. But we shall see. We discard the card that marked their current weakness. Oh, and they're still weak to that, but a right hand slam. Okay, so the left hand moves back to where it's hard to hit. The right hand is up. It's going to hit the Herald for three damage. And this is a stagger effect. And that means after the Herald attacks next time, he will take one damage. But hey, let's look at the Herald's nice new armor. If I block all the damage from an attack, any of us can heal one card. And I'm going to do the recurring effect here. A red and a purple to pay for the white. That'll block the three damage. Won't block the stagger, though. This stays in my hand. And I think the assassins use more cards. So let's heal them one. And best part of this is maybe the Herald will draw a weapon. No luck. <laughs> and it's kind of more of a bummer than it seems because the Assassin's only ranged weapon is the Kukri's, which would put another bleed on this guy, but you can't have more than one of the same status effect. And he can't move far enough to get to attack the right hand that's vulnerable. So you'll just move to the center and kind of hang out for a second. Meanwhile, for the Herald, uh, hey buddy, you think you're going to attack? All right, let's discard three cards. I'm just killing myself. Hey, there we go. A straight sword. Okay, and some more stamina. So the Herald can slide over and smack that uh, right hand. Definitely want to keep the card. So that's two red and a yellow. So uh, we'll do those cards to pay for it. But it itself stays here. And it was not the correct type to ignore the right hand's armor this round. So only two damage gets through. It's got two life left. And then the Herald redraws. Okay, so now I'm fine with the stamina because I can actually attack. Oh, and whoops, I should have moved me over and taken a damage from this. Oh, let's see the top card of my deck, because I forgot what was in my hand. I lost another armor. Okay, Harold is getting very low. I guess I can use my uh, healing ability next round. But first, let's see how High Lord moves around. New card. All right, so remember, this is one of those area of effect things. It's going to push the Herald back one. But if the Herald had not been there, if uh, they had been in the center, no one would have been hit. I know, interesting, both of the hands are vulnerable. I like that. And heavy weapons are the weakness this round. We've both got those. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm, we're going to rock this guy this round. I'll discard my Wolf Knight armor and uh, one red for it. I did block all four of the damage, so I'll heal one, but I still get pushed. And definitely going to have the Herald heal this time. 
And the Herald did get pushed back, but we've got these hands right where we want them. Well, at first, I do get to see the Herald's new cards. I don't think I need them. Healing, that's nice. All right, so let's do a little switcheroo because these guys are not in the right place. With the bleed, if the Herald hits with a heavy weapon, ignoring armor, we just need to do three damage, plus one to four. That'll kill the left hand. And it just so happens we have a straight sword that can do three damage. If we want to keep it, we need two red and a yellow. <laughs> Love these double stamina cards. There we go. So you are cut down to size, my friend. And the assassin only needs to do two damage to the right hand. Though it's just too easy, I can do it and keep the card. Heck, I could even uh, discard the card to do it to two people if the hands were somehow uh, kind of in a column there. But that one will work. We'll hang on to it. And blam! This guy is done because we defeated both of his hands. So the rewards work just like any other encounter, except the treasures are right on the boss. I get a transposed treasure here. And I think I would stop fighting here so I can just put everything together. Let's see what our transposed treasure is. Karthus Shield. Oh man, three block over and over again for any type? That'd be great to go to the Assassin since they threw away all of their defense. What else do we get? Not as much. Worker's Garb. That's going to be good for the Herald again. Oh my gosh, Soul Greatsword. Look, it can just wipe an entire row of enemies. Although, hey... That's even more purple than they needed before. But there you go, that's a taste of Dark Souls at the card game. I would probably go through round four fighting some more because this boss is a good bit harder and then take him on in round five. I've been doing so well, I have no question that I would crush him. But if you get either of the two expansions, they can add in traps and invaders that show up that do make the game even tougher if you want to kind of amp up the difficulty. I do also find the Herald tends to be the strongest hero. Healing is uh, very powerful in this game. But hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Click the link that just popped up if you want to hear my review of the game overall. Good gaming, everyone, and we'll see you at the next stop.